I am, Josh. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? All right. So thank you for having me, Josh, and thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, the Art of Trading, How to Simplify Your Trading and Grow Bigger Profits. I am Mark Dannenberg. I am the founder and CEO of Options Moneymaker, and I appreciate you choosing to spend a little time with me today. I'll try to make it as worthwhile as possible for you. My background, I was a senior executive for 26 years uh, with ADP. Uh, I loved what I did. I had a great opportunity in my career. Uh, I traveled a lot, uh, managed some amazing teams of people, uh, and really enjoyed what I did. But along the way, I knew that I had a strong desire for lifestyle freedom. I started trading about 30 years ago. I traded 20 years as a hobby, and then the past 10 years, I've been teaching uh, other traders and helping those traders learn how to trade options successfully. During the first few years of my trading, I didn't really take it seriously. It was kind of a, a fun way to just kind of dabble in the markets. Uh, but I took a step back and I looked at it one day and realized that it was a potential opportunity to create lifestyle freedom. My definition of lifestyle freedom is I get to work from anywhere, I get to travel anywhere, I get to go anywhere I want to and uh, spend as long as I want to. And as long as I have an internet connection, I can uh, work and generate the type of abundant income that I enjoy. So I founded Options Moneymaker in 2009 as a formal way of being able to teach other traders the art of trading and consolidate the 30 years of experience that I have into um, some very key uh, succinct uh, points that uh, people can follow and avoid a lot of the uh, false starts that I had and a lot of the challenges that I had in my own learning curve. Uh, I'm an active trader involved in the markets every day. Uh, I host a live trading room every day. So when I say I'm active, I mean I'm, I'm active. I'm actively involved in the market throughout the market day. I have a trading team and we coach uh, a large number of people both in our trading room as well as through uh, alerts that we send out and a daily market analysis video that we send out uh, to our clients. Um, and ultimately, I was able to achieve the lifestyle freedom that I desire. Trading has allowed me to do that. And that's one of the reasons why I love teaching other people how to trade, because it's one of the simplest ways for you to start your own business. It's one of the simplest ways for you to use capital that you have and do something that's based on knowledge. It's not based on anybody else being uh, in control of what you do. And if you learn how to trade effectively, you can generate income for the rest of your life. One of my team members has worked for me for four years, a young lady that started with me when she was 22 years old. And she's worked for me now for four years, and she's a phenomenal trader. And I just think about how fortunate she is to be so immersed in trading and, and learning how to trade successfully in the last few years. Uh, and that's something that she'll carry with her the rest of her life. I wish I'd been able to do that when I was 22 years old. So let me try to help you as much as I can. Who's going to benefit from today's presentation? Uh, essentially beginning traders. If you've not really traded options a lot, but you have a, a very basic understanding of the characteristics of options, you understand what puts and calls are, you understand strikes, you understand expirations, uh, you understand a little bit about uh, the deltas, maybe uh, or the Greeks, uh, maybe deltas. Um, this is going to be great for you today because most people who start to understand the basics of options are looking for a way to get started. How do I now immerse myself in the market? How do I take what I read in this book or how do I take what I learned in this webinar or learned from this seminar and actually go apply it? And there aren't a lot of opportunities to do that. I want to show you today a strategy that I think is good for anybody to get started with if you understand the basics of options. If you're an experienced trader and you don't have the level of success maybe you desire, uh, your trading has become overly complex, you don't really uh, enjoy it, you're spending far too much time in your trading, um, I'd like to help you uh, achieve a greater level of success. Um, so pay attention today and I think what I'm going to share with you is something that you might be interested in. Anyone who's committed to <coughs> learning a lifelong skill uh, is going to benefit from today because knowledge can never be taken away from you. I'm going to give you a few key things today that if you are trading today, you may be able to immediately tomorrow apply to your own trading. 
so I'm going to give you some knowledge today that I think could be beneficial for anyone. And then if you're just a trader seeking a, a more simplified way to trade and uh, earn, um, and especially how to minimize fear, fear seems to be a constant for a lot of traders. And we focus a lot on minimizing that through the structure of the way we trade and how we view our trades. Um, if you can minimize fear and grow a bigger account, uh, I think that's what everybody's looking for. So credit spreads is a strategy that's very commonly understood. It's one of the most commonly traded strategies, especially for newer traders. It's a very simple directional strategy. Now here's the interesting thing. It's a simple strategy, but many traders fail at trading credit spreads. And there are a few key reasons why they fail. One is improper selection of strikes. They don't really understand how to uh, uh, decide where to put their strikes when they're opening a credit spread. Insufficient uh, time built into the position. They don't really understand that time is your friend. And if you design the position properly, time will always be your friend. If you design the position improperly, time will work against you. And I don't mean just time value. Time value decay works for you, you'll you understand, as you're trading options. But time itself, the amount of time that you build into the position uh, is very important. Most people I find, and I, I, that may sound overly generalized, but I do think it's most, don't really understand how to assess risk. They have a very naive assessment of risk, and it's only when they wake up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat because they're worried about a position, or they wake up in the morning and realize that the market uh, futures are pointing to a big move one way or the other, and then you start to panic. If you have a sense of discomfort or panic, it's generally because you have too much money at risk. If you are a calm, confident trader, and you are aware, you're aware that you have to put risk into the market anytime you're trading, but you do so in a measured way that will not disrupt your lifestyle, then you can weather most any storm. You can view things uh, from a standpoint of a non-emotional standpoint, and you can understand how to manage it, how to adjust it, how to manipulate it, how to work that trade. If you're overwhelmed by fear because you, uh, you are now about ready to lose money that you didn't really want to lose, then that's going to cloud your judgment. Most traders don't have any kind of an adjustment strategy. They don't really understand how to adjust, especially credit spreads. And my personal philosophy is, and I've been doing this for many years, knowledge of how to properly manage or adjust a position is going to significantly improve your success overall. So what I'm going to talk about today is how to trade credit spreads with what I define as minimal true risk. And I'm going to share with you how to really identify what that true risk is. I'm going to talk about something we refer to as the forgiveness factor. And I'm going to talk about the importance of building time into your position. I'm going to give you some guidelines to follow on how to build time into that position. I'm going to talk about selecting strikes and explorations how and when to adjust a position, and I'm going to show you an example of that. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about properly compounding your profits for bigger account growth. So let's get started. Now, if you have any questions along the way, feel free to put them in the questions box. I generally don't take questions until the end of the presentation, uh, but if you have something that you're thinking about, go ahead and put it out there. And I find that most of the questions are actually answered during the presentation, but uh, that way they'll be out there and I'll be happy to review questions uh, at the end. So let's start with what is the forgiveness factor? Well, the forgiveness factor is a term that we use at Options Moneymaker that essentially means when you open a position, and it is a directionally biased position. So you think the market's going up, or you think the market's going down, and you've opened a trade to take advantage of that. The forgiveness factor is when the price moves against your position, and you can still make a profit or break even. The forgiveness factor is about placing natural barriers between the current price of the stock or index and your risk strike, that strike where you really don't want the price to move beyond that strike. 
it's basically about being wrong on the direction or wrong, or wrong premature on the timing of that trade and still potentially having a profitable trade. So let me give you an example of a credit spread and I'm going to explain a bit more about the forgiveness factor as I build this credit spread. So the credit spread is a trade that uses two different option legs. If I wanted to open a trade that would take advantage of a declining bias, I would sell to open a 45.95 call and I would buy to open a 4600 call, for example. And I would do this when the index was trading around 45.30, which it was the first week of May. We're just using this as an example. So what I'm talking about here is a trade that's been placed on the NASDAQ 100 index. My team and I trade the indexes frequently. NASDAQ 100, the S&P 500, and the Russell 2000. Now to be very clear, I'm not talking about the ETFs. I'm not talking about futures contracts. I'm talking about options, trading options on the NASDAQ 100. So the first week of May, the NASDAQ 100 was trading at 45.30 and we saw a declining bias. And we decided that we wanted to take advantage of that declining bias by opening a call credit spread. When you open a call credit spread, you're selling to open a leg that is close to the money, closer to the money, than a leg that you're buying to open. So that creates a spread, and because the leg that you're selling to open has more value than the leg that you're buying to open, it creates a credit into your account. That's cash coming into your account. In this case, we took a credit of $1.60. Now, when you create a credit spread, you have risk. And the risk is capped at a maximum of the difference between the strikes. So the maximum risk and exposure we would have on this trade would be $5. And that's $5 times the number of shares that are represented by the contracts that you're trading. However, because we took in $1.60 of credit when we opened this trade, we can net that against our $5 of maximum gross risk, and that leaves us with $3.40 of net risk. So we have $3.40 of net risk. Now, in order to decide how many contracts I want to trade, I'm going to use that net risk number to decide what I would be comfortable with. So each contract represents 100 shares, and so if I wanted to trade 10 contracts, I would have risk on that trade of $3,400. So there would be 10 contracts, that would be 1,000 shares, and I have risk of $3.40, so it would be $3,400 of risk. Now, if $3,400 of risk is not comfortable for you, you wouldn't trade 10, 10 contracts. Maybe you're only going to trade two or three contracts at this. So one contract would be $340, although a one contract trade makes it a little difficult to uh, get a nice profit when you factor in commissions, but you can still be successful two or three contracts and have a very limited, reasonable amount of risk. In terms of time frame, we opened this trade the first week of May, and we set our expirations for our two call legs uh, the third week of May. So we're trading weekly options, but most people believe that when you say you're trading weekly is that you're always trading the near week. And trading the near week is not actually a good long-term strategy, in my opinion, especially if you want to minimize the amount of time that you put into your trading. Having time built into your trade, and our time um, guideline is to build two to four weeks into your trade, what that means is that if something happens and I was wrong on my interpretation of the bias, movement bias, or um, the index just surprised me and moves against me, I would have time built into that trade for either the index to move against me and then reverse and move favorably for my position, or I would have time to manage and adjust that trade and I wouldn't feel like I'm going through a fire drill 
trying to immediately uh, rush into action and modify and adjust that trade. So there are two key things that are governing our selection of this position. One is we built a forgiveness factor in, and in our case, the forgiveness factor is 65 points. Selling to open the 45.95, it's 65 points out of the money. When we open a call credit spread, we want the index to remain below our call strike of 45.95. That is our risk strike. So the index could actually move up 65 points and we would still have a profitable trade. So that's point number one, build a forgiveness factor in. And point number two <coughs> is build time of two to four weeks into your trade in case the index moves against you before it moves for you. Now the factors that we use to consider where to place our strikes, we didn't just arbitrarily say we want a 65 point forgiveness factor on NDX. We use a very simple chart method. This is very simplistic charting. This is for people, especially if you're just starting out or you've gotten overwhelmed with your trading, it's a great uh, reset, a great place to refresh uh, your trading. We use support resistance and Bollinger Bands. And that's all we use initially when we are teaching traders how to trade successfully. So I'm going to show you a chart here in just a minute, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But essentially, when we looked at our chart to choose this trade, there were a couple of key things that we saw. One was that the three standard deviation Bollinger Band was at 45.80. And what we know is that when the price of the index moves up to the two or the three standard deviation Bollinger Band, that there is an increasing likelihood that the price is going to reverse. It doesn't guarantee the price is going to reverse immediately. It just is increasing the likelihood that in the near future the price is going to reverse. So what we did is we used that knowledge and we placed our risk strike at 45.95 15 points higher than the three standard deviation Bollinger Band. The other thing we noticed is that at that time, the 15-year high on NDX was 45.62. That was a 15-year high. We placed our risk strike 33 points higher than the highest high that the index had traded in 15 years. Now, that doesn't guarantee anything. It doesn't mean that we won't continue to go higher, and subsequent to um, that time period, we actually did move a um, couple hundred points higher. But it acts as another natural barrier. The index starts to reach a point of exhaustion when it hits its all-time high or a multi-year high, and it's increasing the likelihood that the price is going to reverse. So we did two things here. We gave ourselves a forgiveness factor, and we also placed our risk strike outside of two natural barriers, natural levels of resistance. And then you're going to see that we also had um, another uh, couple of levels of resistance. I'll show you on the chart. And then we had almost three weeks to expiration. So here's a quick snapshot of the chart. And very simply, this horizontal line represents our risk strike at 45.95. And from a visual standpoint, it makes this so easy for a newer trader to just look at the Bollinger Bands and say, if I believe that the index is moving lower, I want to place my strike, if at all possible, outside the two and three standard deviation Bollinger Band. Now, the chart I'm showing you here is a 30-minute time period. This is a 30-minute bar chart. Uh, but we use 30, 60, and daily charts to assess the, play, the positioning of the Bollinger Bands and where we would want to place our strikes. So we placed our, our risk strike above the two and three standard deviation Bollinger Bands. Now you can see, just in this time period, uh, pull up any chart you want to look at and have the two and three standard deviation Bollinger Bands on there. And you're going to see that when the price hits the upper band, it has a tendency to revert back to the lower band. As I said, not immediately all the time, but that 
is an increased likelihood that the price is going to retreat the, in the opposite direction. And when the price is at or below the lower Bollinger Band, there's an increased likelihood that it's going to bounce back higher. So this is not 100%. Nothing with trading is. But these Bollinger Bands and very simple support and resistance channels is a simple way for most people to get started with their trading. So we had a high here that was the highest high in 15 years of the NDX. We placed our risk strike above that. We had a declining set of uh, bars showing lower highs that was defining a declining channel. We placed our risk strike above that. And we have the two and three standard deviation Bollinger Bands. And we placed our risk strike above that. None of this guarantees that the trade is going to be successful. But what we're doing is we're stacking the deck in our favor. We are increasing the likelihood that this trade will be profitable. We're increasing the likelihood that it will be profitable, profitable even if the index were to move strongly against our declining bias view because it's going to run into a strong headwind up here around the Bollinger Bands, and then there's yet another level of resistance that would run into up here. And if all else fails, we've got time built into the position to help manage the position if necessary. So this trade benefits from time and a forgiveness factor. I think that the simple Bollinger Band and support and resistance chart is makes it easy to identify when to get into a trade. And the trade itself is also very simple to set up. Now, we also want to make it simple by order by automating the trade after we are in the credit spread, and we do so by setting a good till canceled order to close the position for a profit. Now, here is where I personally believe, this is just my bias, but I personally believe one of the failure points of credit spread traders comes in. A lot of credit spread traders will open the position with two to three weeks to expiration and their thought or intention is that if they got $1.60 of credit they just want to hold on to it and let it expire worthless at expiration. Well, they're, they're, that's okay as long as the index doesn't move against your position. But the thing about trading the indexes, and this is true about stocks too, is that they cycle up and they cycle down. Every day they cycle up and down to some degree. And there are frequently opportunities to close out for a nice profit well ahead of expiration and then just take your capital and reassess where you'd want to place that capital and put into a new position. So I talked about the five point difference between the strikes as being the gross risk. We make it very simple. There's a theme here. We're trying to simplify it as much as possible. We place a good till canceled order to close our position for a um, 50 cent profit, which is 50 cents, which is 10% of a five point spread. So we're looking for a 10% return, 10 to 15% return. And then once we have our capital back, we repeat and we continue to compound. I personally believe that you can be successful with this type of an approach if you just have 15 to 30 minutes a day to allocate to your trading. You don't have to be scouring through hundreds and hundreds of stocks looking for uh, the ones that will have a good setup. We trade three indexes, the NASDAQ 100, the S&P 500, and the Russell 2000. And I'll explain in just a little bit uh, more about why we choose those three indexes. In that 15 to 30 minutes a day, review your charts. You just have three charts to look at for possible new trades and review your existing positions. And in a few minutes, I'm going to give you three questions that you can ask yourself each day relative to each position. And that's going to give you a clue whether or not you need to take action on that position or whether the best action to take today is to just leave the position alone. So a credit spread is kind of a cool strategy because it can also be used to create a non-directional position. And that's referred to as an iron condor. I didn't create these strategies. What I've done, along with my team at Options Moneymaker, is we've taken well-known, commonly traded strategies, and we've created a set of rules around them that help people be more successful with them. Now, an iron condor is a non-directional strategy where you open both a call credit spread, 
viewing a declining bias, and a put credit spread viewing a rising bias at the same time. So essentially, you want the price of the index to remain below your risk strike on the call spread, and you want it to remain above your risk strike on the put spread. That's an iron condor. It eliminates the need to assess the directional bias on the chart, and the um, potential profit is there regardless of which direction the index moves. You're going to have a profit on one side of the trade or the other. One side's always going to win because the index is going to move. And then the other side is going to benefit from the forgiveness factor. So if you understand the concept of the forgiveness factor and you use your Bollinger Bands as a basic starting point for placing your risk strikes into a new credit spread position, you can open an iron condor and you can win on both sides. Forgiveness factor on one side is going to help you and just pure movement on the other side is going to allow you to achieve a win. So you're going to set up iron condors using Bollinger Bands as a guide for choosing your risk strikes. The indexes, as I said, that we trade are NDX, SPX, and RUT. Again, I want to emphasize these are not the ETFs. These are the indexes. One of the reasons we love trading the indexes as opposed to the ETFs is, first of all, there's a lot of liquidity in them. There's, that's not an issue. The second thing is they are a European-style expiration. What that means is that if you find your position in the money, you can only be exercised or assigned at expiration. Stocks and ETFs are generally American-style expiration, and if you find your position in the money, you can be exercised or assigned at any time leading up to expiration. And I'll just tell you from my personal experience and talking to many, many traders over the years, that one very small fine-tuning detail of trading only those three indexes gives us a lot of peace of mind. Because I don't worry whether or not my position is going to be in the money or worry if I leave it in the money uh, overnight because uh, I might be assigned the next morning. I don't worry about that because I can completely control my position by not allowing myself to be in the money at expiration. This is an excellent way to trade iron condors. Uh, the, the indexes have really... Um, great patterns and easy to recognize patterns when you start working with them on a regular basis. Now, an iron condor can be opened with both sides being opened at the same time, or you can leg into each side as the index cycles. Legging in means maybe one day we open a call spread and the next day we can't close the call spread for a profit, but the markets move lower and it offers us a good opportunity to open the put spread therefore rounding out the iron condor. Excellent way to grab profits regardless of which, which direction the index is moving. So let me walk you through an example of an iron condor that we created. We actually legged into this iron condor on RUT, the Russell 2000 index. Um, on the 8th of April, RUT was trading around 1260. And we decided that there was a declining bias and we opened a 1280-1285 April week four call. So we sold to open that call spread two and a half weeks to expiration and a 20 point forgiveness factor. We took a dollar forty of credit when we opened that. The following day on the 9th, the index had moved lower and it had moved down to about 1250, so it was down about 10 points. We had an opportunity to close out of our call spread and lock in a 60 cent profit. So we did that. Now that 60 cent profit on a five point gross risk is 12% return. So we're comfortable in a 10 to 15% range. We're not looking for big home runs. We're looking for a ton of base hits and we just want to keep clawing profits into our profit bucket. Now what was really cool about the ninth is at the same time we saw an opportunity that the index might be reversing back to the upside. So after we closed the call, we took that capital and re immediately recycled it into a put spread. The put spread also had about two and a half weeks to expiration and 
20 points of forgiveness because we use the 20, 30, 12, or 12, 30, 12, 25 April week four puts. Took a dollar 12 of credit. Later that same day on the 9th, the index did in fact cycle higher and it cycled high enough that we were able to reopen the same call spread for $1.30 of credit. This is the same spread we had opened the prior day for $1.40 of credit and had already taken 60 cents of profit. So at this point now, with both the calls and the puts in place, we have an iron condor in place. The key to having an iron condor is both sides need to have the same expiration. Both sides need to have the same distance between the short strike and the long strike. And both sides uh, would need to have the same number of contracts. So we now have an iron condor. And you might be asking, so what difference does it make? You know, it, to me, it's just a call spread and a put spread in place. Well, the reason it's significant to keep in mind the iron condor is very simply this. You have five points of spread risk when you open that put spread. Five points of spread risk. Now, we're going to net out of that $1.12 of credit. When we open the call spread, we are not adding five points of spread risk because you can only actually have risk on one side or the other. You can't lose on both the put and the call at the same time. So when you add the other side, you are only adding credit. You are not adding additional five points of spread risk. So now we have five points of spread risk with $2.42 of credit instead of five points of spread risk with only $1.12 of credit. And what that does is it dramatically reduces our overall risk in the trade. Risk of capital in the trade is very, very important that you manage all the time, that you become, be, remain aware of what your risk is. So let's continue. On the 10th, which is just the next day, I mean two days after we started this trade, we ended up buying to close the puts. The, the index had continued to move higher, and we bought to close the puts that we had opened on the 9th. That was a 60 cent uh, debit, so we had another 52 cents of profit on that. And then a week later on the 17th, we ended up buying to close the calls, the second set of calls, and we paid 40 cents to buy those back, giving us a 90 cent uh, profit. So the summary of this trade is this. We were in the trade for seven trading days, nine calendar days. We ended up taking a profit of $1,010. That's $2.02 .02 of profit trading five contracts. Okay, five contracts is 500 shares. So if you take the $2.02 .02 of profit and divide it by your five points of spread risk, that's a 40.4% return. It's really very simple. That's getting in based on the movements of the index. It's getting in based on the Bollinger Bands. It's legging into an iron condor. And it's taking advantage of profits when they present themselves. We're basically opening and closing on the cycles. And then we're immediately recycling the capital back into a new position to generate bigger returns on that same capital. So here's a snapshot of a chart that will show you uh, where we took each of those actions. Over here is where we sold to open the call spread originally. Now down here, what we saw was that the price of the index had moved below the two standard deviation Bollinger Band, which is the inner set of blue bands here. And it had moved right down to the three standard deviation. Now we know from experience that that is starting to increase the likelihood of the index moving back to the upside. As I said, and I want to qualify this and be very sure you hear me say, I'm not guaranteeing that's going to happen. But based on our experience, there's such a high degree of probability that that is going to occur that we're going to trade off of it. So that tells me that I want to take whatever profit I have on the call spread at that time because it looks like it's going to bounce back higher. And that also tells me that I want to sell to open the put spread at that time because I think it's going to bounce back higher. So we did that, and then the price moved back higher, and we sold to open the call spread again. I think in hindsight we should have waited a little bit, but I was in, 
I, I was interested in opening that call spread because I could reopen it for only 10 cents less than I had opened it the day before. So then I'm in the iron condor and I have significantly reduced my overall risk because I've got bigger credits against the same $5 of gross risk. As the index continued to move higher, we reached the upper Bollinger Bands, and that increases the likelihood that we're going to see a reversal. And so we went ahead and bought to close the put spread. We had uh, a nice profit on it. And the index continued to move a bit higher. As I said, it doesn't immediately bolt back for the lower bands. Moved a little bit higher, and then it went down to the lower bands. We let it cycle one more time up and then down before we were um, able to close out of our um, second call spread. And then we were out of the entire trade. So sometimes despite building forgiveness into the trade and despite building time into the trade, sometimes even with those things, you need to manage or adjust a position. We use three very simple methods of adjusting credit spreads. One is a rollout. So options have a limited lifespan to them. It's like holding a melting ice cube in your hand. Eventually, they're going to cease to exist when you get to expiration. But sometimes you can have a trade that is still set up for a good movement, but it just hasn't realized a profit yet. Maybe you were in the trade prematurely. Maybe the market moved against you before it starts moving for you. And the worst thing for me in trading is to have a good trade but then run out of time before I'm able to actually realize a profit. So a rollout is simply moving the expiration out in time in order to add more time to the trade. It could be adjusting it out one week. It could be adjusting it out one month. But it's rolling it out. It's keeping the same trade, the same strikes, and you're still in that trade, but you're adding more time to the trade. The second approach to adjusting is a reposition, moving the strikes out of the money. If the index has moved strongly against you, then you may want to um, adjust the strikes and push the strikes out of the money. And that's called a reposition. And then the third approach, third most common approach that we use, is the rollout and reposition together, where we're going to add time and we're going to reposition at the same time. Most of the time, these three methods of adjusting will take care of any trade issue we have. Not all the time, but most of the time. And generally, it's a small amount of capital that's required in order to manage these effectively. They're simple to execute, simple to understand, and once you kind of get into a flow, you're going to understand exactly when to take action. Okay? But most people don't understand when to take action, and so what we've designed is a set of three very simple questions that you can ask yourself each day on each trade, each position that you hold, that's going to help you understand whether or not now is the time to take action or now is the time to just leave the position alone. If you ask yourself the, the following three questions every day, it's only going to take you a matter of a minute to ask yourself these three questions on each position. And if you hold two to five positions, five would be a lot, but generally we're holding somewhere between two to four positions, uh, credit spread positions, um, it's not going to take you much time. So what we've done is we've designed this in a way that you can trade with a minimal amount of time investment. And if something happens later on in the day after you've done your evaluation, don't worry about it come back and evaluate it again the next day because you've built time into your trade so there's no uh, sense of fire drill urgency for you to jump on taking action. So question number one, is there a profit? Well, if the answer is no, there's absolutely no action that you need to take on that trade based on taking a profit or not. If the answer is no, leave it alone. Question number two, is the risk strike in the money. Now remember, we want our risk strikes on credit spreads to always remain out of the money. Is the risk strike in the money? If the answer is no, you don't have a profit, my risk strike is still out of the money where I want it to be, I'm going to leave the trade alone. 
And the third question is, am I running out of time? Is my expiration less than one week away? If the answer is no, okay, I don't have a profit yet. My risk strike is still out of the money where I want it to be, and I've still got time in my trade. I don't take any action. I shut my computer off, and I go have a great day doing something that I love doing. And I come back tomorrow, and I do the exact same evaluation on the same positions. Now, if you do have a profit, it becomes entirely up to you as to whether or not you actually want to take that profit. As I said, my guideline is 10%. If I can get out with a 10% return and that's 10% of the gross credit of the gross risk, I'm happy and I'll take my capital and go find another trade. If my risk strike is in the money, then that's the first clue that I may need to reposition or roll out, but most likely reposition. If my expiration is less than one week away, that's my first clue that I may need to roll out. Because if I don't have a profit and my risk strike is in the money, I need to take some action. If I don't have a profit yet and my expiration is less than one week away, I'm going to want to add more time to the trade. If my risk strike is in the money and I'm less than one week away, that is kind of the, uh, the confirming a clue that you need to go take action, and most likely that's a simple rollout and or a reposition. All right, so let me walk you through a managed trade. This is giving you an example of a managed trade. Let's say about 20% of the trades that we open require some sort of management. Um, simple adjustments. They're not complicated. They're not overwhelming. But let me share with you exactly how we handled a trade that uh, turned against us. Uh, this is on NDX, and this is when NDX was trading at 43.80. We opened an iron condor. We did not leg into this iron condor. We opened both sides at the same time. Um, we had a 44.45 call risk strike and a 43.00 put risk strike. Now, here are the credits that we took on those two. We have a 65-point forgiveness factor on the calls. That's 65 points between our risk strike and the current price of the index when we open the trade. And we have an 80-point forgiveness factor on the puts. Now, that's a big forgiveness factor. And what that does is it creates what we call a sweet spot. It creates a sweet spot, which is the gap, that space between our two risk strikes. And in this case, it's a 145-point sweet spot. As long as the index stays inside that sweet spot, what we are doing is leveraging rapid time value decay on all uh, four legs on the two sides of, the, of the, uh, the iron contour. So that all happened on the 30th of March. Then on the 2nd of April, we bought to close the calls. The index moved lower. We bought to close the calls. We actually had a very healthy profit on that, bigger than our 10% return. Sometimes what will happen is when we wake up and see what the futures are doing, we will, before the market opens, cancel a, our good to canceled order to close and look for an opportunity to take a bigger profit uh, at the open. So in this case, we took a bigger profit, and now we are just left with the put spread. So no longer have an iron condor. On the 6th of April, we sold to open a new call spread. So the index had cycled back higher, and we opened a new call spread, putting us back into an iron condor, but it was not the same set of strikes that we originally had. But it was an iron condor because it's the same expiration as the puts, it's the same spread between the short and the long strikes, and it was the same number of contracts. And we took $1.50 of credit on that. On the 9th of April, three days later, we ended up buying to close the put spread. And we paid 50 cents to close out of the puts that we had originally sold for $1.17 of credit. So that gave us a 67 cent profit. Now on the 10th of April, the index had continued to move higher and it was trading above our new 4,400 risk strike. That's the new risk strike on the call spread that we had just opened uh, the day before. And we felt it was necessary 
to um, uh, manage that trade. Sorry, not the day before. Uh, we opened those calls on the 6th. We felt it was necessary to manage that trade because now our risk strike was in the money and we were starting to run out of time on the position. So what we decided to do was very simply roll out and add more time. We, our view was that this was still a good trade, but we would run out of time potentially before the trade uh, revealed a profit for us. So what we did is we rolled out. The rollout is a simple process. What we do is set up on one order ticket a transaction that will buy to close the April week three call and simultaneously sell to open the May week three call using the same strikes. So essentially we are shifting our uh, expiration from April out to May. Now we had to pay $3.40 to close the April week three calls, but we received a $3.20 credit simultaneously to open the May week three calls, so it cost us 20 cents. It cost us 20 cents for the right to have an extra month in our trade, and hopefully we would still uh, be able to work through uh, to a profit. A week later, as we were running up against the April week three expiration, we were actually able to close out of our new May Week 3 calls. We paid back $2.20 of the three twenty that we took in. This rollout basically allowed us to hold and wait for a down cycle. So the summary of that trade is as follows. We were in the trade for 14 trading days, 18 calendar days. We ended up taking $468 of profit overall. Now, it's not as much profit as we had thought we were going to lock in when we started out the trade, but it was profit after having managed and adjusted the trade because our strike was in the money. That's 78 cents of profit overall on six contracts that we were trading. Now, if you take that 78 cents divided by our five-point spread risk, because we never exceeded five points of gross risk, we had a 15.5% return, despite the fact that we needed to manage and adjust the trade. Basically, again, we're opening and closing on the cycles. This is all about managing and adjusting rather than worrying about your position. And when my position was in the money, I didn't need to take action immediately because I have a European-style expiration, which gives me peace of mind that I can remain in control of my position. In my, per, in my personal view, adjustments by a lot of peace of mind. So here's a chart view of um, what we did. Uh, these uh, represent the risk strikes when we opened the position. Uh, when the index moved lower, we saw that it was coming down uh, below the lower Bollinger Band. That was a good time for us to take a profit on the calls. and. At the time that it was below the lower Bollinger Bands, our put risk strike was actually in the money, uh, but we didn't take action. And the reason we didn't take action is because being below the lower Bollinger, Bollinger Bands tells me that we will most likely move higher from there, and I still had plenty of time in the trade. So we didn't take action there. Uh, when the index moved back higher, we had an opportunity to reopen that call spread, and then we um, uh, took advantage of our um, uh, rollout strategy, and it was time to roll out the position here. And then we ultimately ended up closing the uh, call spread, uh, the second call spread after the rollout down here on the move down. So again, this is about leveraging the cycles and the movements using very simple support and resistance, as well as Bollinger Bands. So leverage the cycles based on Bollinger Bands. Uh, it's a good approach for newer traders. It keeps things very simple. Build a forgiveness factor into each trade. It helps you be on the right side, even though the index may move against you. It helps you be profitable. And give your time, uh, your position time. Uh, to avoid that roller coaster fear and anxiety. I don't want to be running up against expiration if I can avoid it. Sometimes I can't avoid it, 
uh, sometimes I um, hold a trade uh, longer into expiration than I comfortably want to, but those are some of the real-time decisions that you're making throughout your trading. If you learn the concepts and you become knowledgeable and, and confident with your understanding of what to do, then it's just going to equip you to be a more confident trader um, throughout real-time trading. So I'll, I'm going to take just two minutes here. I'm going to share with you a program that we have, and then I want to take questions. We have a program called our Profit Builder Program, and it focuses on these types of trades, credit spreads on the three major indexes. Now, we're offering an opportunity to participate in the program, and we ask people that participate in the program to start with a reasonably small amount of trading capital. You can start with less than this, um, but what we recommend is that you start with $5,000 of trading capital. That's capital that you're willing to commit to trades. We're not looking for a $100,000 account here. We're not looking for a $50,000 account here. And frankly, if you have those size accounts or more, if you came to the Profit Builder program, I would still suggest just start with $5,000 of risk. The objective of the Profit Builder program is to teach you how to feel confident with your trading. It's to teach you how to make money, but it is to teach you how to trade independently so that at some point in the future, you're not dependent on somebody else advising you as to what trades to take and what the market's doing. We want you to learn. What we do then is compound our profits each week into new positions, um, if, and then we reset at the beginning of a quarter. Um, so we try to make money on every trade, but more importantly, we provide an education to you on how to think like a successful trader. So where we are right now with the Profit Builder program is we started with $5,000 of investment risk and an $11,000 live account value. Now these trades, we send out alerts with the trades when we're placing them, uh, and we tell you exactly what trade we're placing. These are not hypothetical paper traded trades. These are traded in a live account. So you get to track along with us and you'll see on a daily basis what our performance is. And we compound profits each week. So through, through the first 34 weeks, uh, we have total profits of just under $4,200, um, which is about an 80, almost an 84% return on $5,000. Our projected one-year performance for the Profit Builder program, projected right now, and that assumes a uh, continuation of the run rate that we've already established, projected first-year performance is to earn $16,000 on um, $5,000 of investment risk, uh, which was an $11,000 account. But we, we never exceeded our allowed investment risk. My opinion is this is a very simple way to start small and grow big. This projected number will continue to change. It may get smaller if we have some challenges. It may get bigger if we have a whole series of, uh, of wins. But overall, our wins outpace our losses, and we are comfortably on pace to be at about 16, just under $16,500 of profits against $5,000 of risk. So if that interests you, if that's something that may fit into your trading, if it's something that you're interested in participating in, um, Profit Builder is a six-month subscription. Six-month subscription. And what you get every day, five days a week for six months, is email and text alerts when we are opening or closing a trade uh, opening, closing, or managing a trade, uh, we place these trades in our live trading room. This is not an offer to participate in our live trading room. This is an offer to follow along with trades that we will email to you that we have selected as part of our Profit Builder program. In that alert, we're going to tell you the exact strikes. We're going to tell you the expirations that we have chosen. We're going to tell you the number of contracts that we're trading. And we're going to tell you what we got filled at what our credit was when we opened the trade, what our debit was when we closed the trade, and we're going to provide some direction to you, some guidance as to how much latitude you can give yourself in terms of filling that trade. The trades will come out to you 
after we've uh, placed our trade, but it doesn't mean that the price is going to change significantly. These are not trades where uh, the market moves in the next 15 minutes and all of a sudden you lose the opportunity. We have many, many of these trades that are followed along by um, uh, people who have jobs, uh, run businesses, have busy lives, and sometimes they don't actually get into the trade until the following day. Uh, we have people all over the world that are following us that sometimes are sleeping during market hours when uh, we're sending out a trade. So uh, don't be concerned about that. I think the real meat of the Profit Builder program, personally, having traded for 30 years and I rewind and wish 20, 30 years ago I'd found somebody who would just thread the needle for me and help me understand what to do each and every day. I think the real meat of it is every day we send out a 15 to 30 minute video that does an analysis of the charts, the three index charts. It does a review using our three question process on each position. And if we send out an alert that day, we explain in the video uh, the reason we chose that trade action, the reason we selected strikes that we did if we were opening a new position, the reason we chose to close a trade if we did, the reason we chose to to manage a trade and what actions we took to manage. So we're basically giving you the trade and say if you want to follow along go ahead and then <clears throat> as a follow-up to that usually um, a little bit after the middle of the market we're sending out this 15 to 30 minute uh, video. You get that every day five days a week for uh, six months and I think six months is a great time period uh, in terms of a learning curve. You invest 15 to 30 minutes a day every day for six months, you're going to feel much more confident uh, as a trader. So uh, the regular price for this is $1,295. The Profit Builder program is a $1,295 program. Uh, I think that's undervalued, but uh, we're actually offering it today for $595. Getting towards the end of the year, um, we just would like to help as many people as we can. Uh, I decided I wanted to price it uh, for a special for the next 24 hours to a point where it's basically less than $100 a month. Uh, and if this type of a program fits into your, um, your desired uh, trading strategy, then um, feel free to uh, go to optionsmoneymaker.com forward slash builder and that will um, allow you to sign up for the Profit Builder program. If you have any questions that come up, if I don't get to them today, or uh, if you have any questions that come up, feel free to email me at markd at optionsmoneymaker.com. I try to respond to emails as quickly as, as I can. Uh, I generally am not paying attention to email very much during market hours, uh, but um, I'll get back to you as quickly as I can if you have questions. But uh, optionsmoneymaker.com forward slash builder will get you into um, the Profit Builder program. All right, uh, I'm going to leave that up on the screen. Let me just see what kind of questions you have out there. Uh, let's see. Um, is the good to canceled order placed on the option or the underlying? You're placing the good to canceled order on the option spread, on the spread that you have. You opened it for maybe $1.60 of credit. You're going to turn around and you're going to place a good to canceled order to close that spread for, let's say, $1.10, where you're going to pay back $1.10 of the $1.60 of credit that you took in, and that locks in your $0.50 cent or 10% return. Mark is making a comment, and I don't want to get into uh, tax advice here, anything, but he is spot on. You can talk to your CPA or tax attorney about it. Trading these indexes actually has a tax advantage to them. Uh, there's a 60-40 tax advantage, uh, meaning that even if you trade short term, uh, it's not treated as short term capital gains. 60% of it is actually treated as long term capital gains, so there's a tax advantage to uh, trading that. Um, what are the characteristics, settings of the Bollinger Bands you use? Uh, it's a 20-day uh, look-back period and then uh, two uh, for the two standard deviation and then three for the three standard deviation. Uh, let's see here. Uh, keep at least 50% of capital in reserve. Uh, that's not necessarily true. It happens to be true 
uh, and the way we set up our account. It's more about having $5,000 of risk or predefined amount of risk and then some excess in reserve for managing positions when necessary. Frankly, if you set up an $8,000 account or more, I personally believe that is sufficient to trade the Profit Builder program where you're putting on $5,000 of risk capital. And that $5,000 of risk capital is going to be spread across three to five positions. And generally, as a rule of thumb, you're going to start out with three contracts uh, on each trade. Uh, yes, you need money to close the position, but you took money in. When you open the position, you're just giving back a portion of that money to close it. Uh, okay, uh, let's see here. What do you do in the live trading room that's different from Profit Builder? Uh, John, we trade um, long spread strategies. We trade long vertical spreads. We trade calendar spreads. We trade diagonal spreads. Um, we trade iron condors. They tend to be um, more aggressive iron condors. Um, but that this is real-time trading. The alert service, so I, I just want to qualify this and say, if you are interested in Profit Builder, we'd love to have you. The, the optimum performance of your account is going to come from you taking 100% ownership for your own trading. So if you go through a six-month program and at the end of six months you want to sign up again, that's great. By the way, we grandfather the price. If you sign up for $5.95 now and in six months you want to just continue receiving our alerts and our daily uh, educational videos, you'll get to uh, renew again for the same $595 price. Um, but you're always going to be trading off of what we view and we're going to be sending you alerts and it may not be the most convenient time for you. But that's part of the learning process. When you learn and become a competent, efficient trader on your own, you're going to be able to choose all of your trades independently and you won't be dependent on us. In the live trading room, every single trade is viewed in real time by the people participating in the trading room and they can open uh, that trade immediately along with us. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's just take two more questions and then um, close it out. Which brokerage account do you recommend? I don't really recommend particular brokers. I'll tell you who I use, and I'm quite satisfied with them. I love the simplicity of them. I trade at Options House. Uh, it's the old Trade Monster platform. Uh, very user-friendly platform from my perspective. Easy to navigate and makes this type of trading very, very simple. All right. Um, we'll close it out here, and I just want to thank everybody for spending a little bit of your time with me today. I thank Josh for a nice introduction today. If you have any questions, you can reach me, Mark D at optionsmoneymaker.com. And if you're interested in signing up, optionsmoneymaker.com forward slash builder. Thank you, everyone.